Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a look at the calibration tab that's found in the develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. Every camera renders colors a bit differently from one another. For example, this image was shot with a Nikon D800E. If I happen to shoot this image at the exact same time, with the exact same exposure settings, with a different manufacturer's camera, doesn't matter, Canon, Fujifilm, Olympus, anything else beside this specific Nikon D800E, I guarantee the colors would look at least slightly different. That's because a manufacturer renders their colors in a very specific way. Nikon, what Nikon might consider sky blue, isn't what Canon considers sky blue. So the colors will look a bit differently. With the calibration tab, you could tweak the calibration of your camera's rendering of those colors very easily with these sliders. The calibration tab also does a bit more. Lightroom actually has, of course, algorithms, software involved to interpret your RAW files. You could tweak or you could choose which set of rules Lightroom uses to interpret your RAW files. That is called Lightroom's process engine. Over the years, Lightroom has had four different process engines. If you look up here at the top of the calibration tab, you'll see process and you'll see version 4 current. And if I open that drop down, you can see that there were three older versions. Now, if I just briefly jump up to the basic tab and you can see what we're very familiar with for several years now, we have exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. That's the settings or that's the sliders that are in this process version and they happen to be in the previous process version as well. But if I open up the calibration tab and I go to an older process version, older than 3, back to let's say version 2 which was in Lightroom in 2010, when I pick that you'll see the image changes considerably but if we go back up to the basic tab you can see now we have some odd sliders. We have exposure still, but we have recovery and fill light. We have blacks, but we have no whites. We have brightness. We have contrast. So this process engine, this older process engine, interprets the RAW file quite differently than the previous, more current process engine does that had highlight shadows, whites, blacks. So for some of uh, photographers, they prefer to use an older process engine. I'm not sure why uh, one might want to do that, but some people do. If you do, of course, you could access them here and you have the three older versions. So that's one thing. You could really determine how Lightroom interprets a RAW file. But what about that RAW file itself? How your camera actually determined the scene? That's where everything else comes into play. First of all, under some lighting conditions, some cameras may give a color tint to the shadows. You're able to correct that here with this shadow slider. Unfortunately, I didn't have an image that really had this issue, so hopefully I could try to explain it best I can. The way it would work is a lot of times, and I think the most common issue with shadows is sometimes they get tinted a little bit green. If that is the case, you would go to this shadows tint slider and you would move it away from green. So you'd move it to the right. So you'd move it the opposite way. If your shadows have a mauve or a, um, a magenta tint to them, you would move this slider to the left to try to eliminate that. So that's really all this slider does. It helps you color correct the shadows and very easy to do and you would just eyeball it. There's not an automated process to do this. You would just have to look at the shadows and keep moving the slider until the shadows are more neutral. Now below that is the actual color mix 
uh, involved here, red, green, and blue. And you can see there's two sliders for each, hue and saturation. Now I mentioned that every manufacturer interprets colors a bit differently. And you probably already know that as far as a camera's sensor is concerned, it sees light. But there's filters above that sensor that will filter the light to allow only or mostly red, green, and blue light to come through and hit the sensor. And the mix of those three colors produces the actual color that is underneath that pixel in the image. So up here for sky blue, there's actually a mix of red, green, and blue that produces this shade of color. Same thing over here. Anywhere in your image, there's actually an, a mix of three colors. Now, we don't want to get confused with the U saturation that's involved in this tab when we compare it with the U saturation of, let's say, the HSL color tab. With this, I could take, let's say, the saturation of the blue slider and move it to the right, and I will mainly just be increasing the saturation of anything that is mostly blue in the image, and we're not affecting any of the other colors. We're only affecting blue. What is different about the calibration tab is you're actually affecting the mix. So if, for example, let's see if I could try to, if I hover over this blue sky here, and then we look under the histogram over here, you'll see that right where I am hovered over says that it's 72.4 red, 78.6% green, and 90.6% red. That is our actual kind of mix for the color. When I come in here and affect any of these sliders, we're actually going to be changing that mixture of color. So it will affect everything. So if I come in here and I change the blue hue, you could see that it's affecting even the greens and yellows everywhere else because we're changing that mix, that color mix that, is, that I was uh, trying to talk about here. So a camera manufacturer, let's say my Nikon interpreted it this way, and let's say I immediately put a, a Canon camera here with the same exact exposure settings and took the same exact shot. The colors would be different. I could theoretically come in with this Nikon RAW file, and if my screen color rendition was good enough, my eyesight was good enough, my color rendering of my eyes was good enough, and I had enough patience, I could theoretically come in and adjust these six sliders until my Canon or my Nikon RAW image looked identical to the Canon RAW image. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about these mixes. So if you come in and you just don't like the yellows that your, Im that your camera produces, let's say, you could try to come in and move some of these sliders around to get a different rendering of the um, interpretation of those colors. Um, it's really a kind of an advanced topic in my opinion. It's not something most photographers even bother with. Now, if you want to reset the sliders, you could just double click on the names, like I want to reset shadows, I could just double click on the word shadows, or I could hold the Alt or Option key, and Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and then you could single click on each of these headings, and you'll reset all those sliders back to their default position. Now, what some photographers do is they like to add a bit of pop to their image, and surprisingly, uh, you could do that often with the saturation slider of the blue primary. So if I take saturation to the right, you can see how it kind of intensifies all the colors. Now, I don't think it's a good rendering for this specific scene, but a lot of photographers like to do this. And believe it or not, it's very popular in wedding photography, um, especially when you have the bride and groom outside and you're taking their images outside, the bridal party outside, a lot of wedding photographers will take this blue primary saturation slider and move it to the right. And it just really adds a lot of pop to the image. And it really gives nice skin tones as well. And again, you wouldn't think that blue 
would affect skin, but it does because you're actually affecting the color mix when you're doing this. So I encourage you to experiment uh, with this. I recently, or not recently, I guess a couple of years ago, I did a um, Lightroom Quick Tips video that was like titled Make Your Images Pop. And really all the video was about was taking the saturation slider of the blue primary and moving it to the right. A lot of people uh, messaged me or wrote comments on that video and said they've experimented with the other two as well and found a lot of situations where the other two color, pri the red primary and the green primary, actually did a lot to their images as well. And they found that they're often now, let's say, for very specific types of landscape images, taking their red primary slider and moving it to the right. Um, so experiment with it and see what you could come with, up with. And again, if you don't like the color rendering, I know it's not as much today, but I'd say a few years ago, a lot of Canon photographers didn't like the portrait rendering that their cameras produced. They thought Nikon did a better job of color rendering skin tones. If you have an older Canon camera that's still, you're not too happy with the color skin tones of um, its rendering, you could experiment here and try to get the, um, the rendering for skin tone more to your liking. And then you could either create a preset that contains those, or you could um, go up and create a, um, you would have to have, of course, um, um, Photoshop to do that, but you could create a profile for that. And I have videos on how to create profiles, but I definitely would create a preset if you think that the color rendering of your camera for a very specific type of image, say a portrait, isn't up to snuff and you could fix it here, you know, do so. Uh, really, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the calibration tab. Usually, I think most of us don't even bother opening this tab up or even looking at it, but it might be worth some time to invest and see if you could come up with something here that helps your images make them exclusively yours. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.